Hey everyone, welcome. It's been, well, I mean, I didn't even get that much sleep last night because, you know, my mind is just on this eruption that occurred. Again, first time in my life that this is this has happened somewhere near me. I've always lived somewhere without earthquakes or eruptions. So it's been, it's been very, very exciting to sort of go through this and to report on it. And hopefully everyone enjoys the report in English. Now, I got a couple things to show you today. Uh, it's first thing in the morning, and of course the news is just covered with stuff about the eruption. So first things, let's take a look at a video I found showing the eruption from last night. And this is, it looks great. They really got close. I guess they got some sort of a drone or maybe a really long lens. And they've taken this, uh, let's just go full screen here for you. And they've taken these amazing videos of the eruption that's occurring in the middle of the night. And I think the contrast with sort of this dark sky and this super bright lava is is really spectacular. I think it's it's really phenomenal. So this is the video that came came last night. Again, if we sort of skip forward a little bit, you can really see how how forceful this this lava can be and you can see it slowly moving as as it sort of goes down. Now what we're going to do in this video today is take a look at exactly where this eruption occurred. We're going to look at some more pictures during the day and then just go over some of the news and the recommendations that the authorities and the scientists are making because there is always a concern for the air quality and the pollution and the gases that are emitting from this eruption. And depending on which way the wind is going, you want to make sure that you're safe and follow the recommendations made by the authorities. And we're going to get into that in just a little bit. Just want to help, just finish watching this video. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. It's, uh, you know, as I said in the last video when it just erupted, you know, I'm scrambling to try to get all the all the information I can for you. I do hope that it is safe for me to go and see this with my own eyes. Now, in a second here, let's take a look at where it is in the map. We can see it's in a valley, so it's it's not quite at this uh, Fagrosfeld that we thought yesterday. It's actually just sort of situated in this in this valley area. And if we look at some of the pictures, you can see here that it's sort of in this lower area of the valley. So getting getting to this would be fairly difficult for someone because obviously there's no roads that lead directly to it. It's uh, it's kind of my hope, I guess, at this point that the lava goes a little bit outside the valley. I mean, not in a way that it's going to uh, be dangerous for anyone, but just something that's a little bit more accessible so that it's it's possible and safe to view from a distance. So you can see a lot of these images. It's from a helicopter or a plane, and, and these are courtesy of the various news organizations here in Iceland that they've gone and sent people out. You can see just how how big it is, and uh, and just sort of how far away it is from everything, which is which is really good news. I mean, this is what we were all hoping for is just a really safe one, but um, yeah, and it doesn't look like there's a huge amount coming out, a, a huge amount of lava, but who knows? I mean, this could change as time goes on. I, you know, I'm learning as this all has been unfolding over the past few weeks. I've been learning from all the comments on what to expect. And I think that the consensus is, is you know, expect the unexpected, as cliche as that sounds. It's, uh, you know, Mother Nature just does what she wants to do. And it's you can have all the scientists. I mean, the funny thing actually about this is yesterday on the evening news, there was a geologist, and or I think, it was, I think he was a geologist, but there was a scientist that was saying, no, it's not going to erupt. There's, I'm not worried about this at all. And then a couple hours later, of course, it erupts. And so he looked, um, I mean, he laughed it off, saying that based on the data that they had, they didn't think that it was going to erupt. But they were they were very surprised. And it just goes to show you that anything can happen. So, again, we have these pictures here. All fantastic. I mean, they are fairly high, but you can see that it's this lava in this area is not as big as one would have thought. And the lava is, I guess, just going to travel where it travels. Now, one important thing that I want to get to is just the news and what we should be looking out for. Now, 
The eruption, as I stated in the last video, was only discovered because people noticed the sky had this hue, this red hue to it. And so at that point, they sent out some helicopters to go investigate and did confirm that, yes, the eruption had started. They are saying that if the sky was a bit different and not cloudy and maybe just, you know, a clear sky, that it perhaps could have gone unnoticed until later on. Or if the eruption occurred during the day, then perhaps we would we would not even have known until the evening. So yesterday, the police closed some of the main roads because a lot of people were trying to get to this to this area. Uh, it is really important that everyone listens to the authorities, listens to all of the recommendations about don't don't go and try and see it yet. Let's just wait and see until everyone says it's safe. Let's see where the lab is going and and going. From there, then we can perhaps go and see it. Now, uh, I'm gonna, let's try and say this valley correctly. Gellingdur Dalur is a closed valley that, that's away from all settlements and people, and it's deep and it doesn't really have a lot of drainage, and it's behind a bunch of mountains. So, it's it's a closed valley, so a lot of lava can just be there before something starts to leave the area. It's it's one of the more suitable places they're saying in the Reykjanes Peninsula. For, for an actual lava eruption, which is which is kind of funny. So because it is in this valley, it says the the people of the Reykjanes Peninsula are not in danger due to the lava flows, but it's the air pollution and then the gas pollution that is something that everyone has to be mindful for. So they're also thinking that the eruption, which again came as a surprise, is a fissure type and i know a lot of people were saying that on the last video and the fissure now yesterday they were saying it was around 200 meters and so they're now saying it's maybe 500 to 700 meters and the lava flowed in two directions and one's to the south and the other to the west so one last thing i want to do before ending this video because people are still taking a look at this is look at the air and the wind maps so if we see here just zoom in we can see the wind direction and there have been people and towns in the south of iceland and i believe it's thorlex uh is the town if i pronounce that correctly that have been told to close their windows and turn off any sort of ventilation they have coming from the outside just because of the dangers of the air pollution but the good news is you can see that it's it because the eruption is relatively small from what i'm reading the actual effect on the rest of the world and mainland Europe and stuff like that, uh, I don't think there would be any effect. I'm not a scientist. This is the first time I'm sort of going to this, but based on everything that I'm reading, it seems like it's going to be, everyone else is going to be fine. It's just going to be an Iceland problem. And it's, in fact, going to be not even that big of a problem because of where the eruption has occurred as well as the size. So that's it. wanted to keep you all updated you know, early morning here in Iceland, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. There's a lot of information still to come, I'm sure. If you want to keep updated on some videos, some images that people are posting, or just the latest news on where the lab is going, how it's affecting people here in Iceland, then uh, hit the subscribe button. And of course, always leave comments for any information that you have, any tips on dealing with, you know, living through an eruption. Should I expect more earthquakes? Or is it kind of done for now? These are all questions going through my mind. And the news has kind of stopped a little bit more, stopped a little bit on that earthquake front. So until next time, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.